Hey guys, it's Cheyenne, aka Shy Little Fox. I'm trying to do another video. Um, why am I so awkward? If you like super awkward and just random chattiness, you should subscribe, like the video, comment, share it, whatever, or don't. I just can't do that because it feels so pushy. Would be appreciated. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so I have changed up my um, ring light situation, and I'm going to say ring light with finger quotes because I use LED uh, daylight stripping, and the one I had was on like a piece of cardboard wrapped with duct tape and LED lights wrapped around it, and I gifted that to somebody who doesn't have very much lighting in their house because I just hung up an actual full-size mirror so I can kind of see better what's going on, and it had a lip around it. So you got this part and then this part. And so around the lip, I laid the LED stripping. I don't personally like it because it seems like it's a little bit dim, but for video purposes, it's not doing that weird focus thing. Another quick thing before I get into it, I did the equivalent to bad things. You know how you cut bangs and you're not supposed to because it comes out real bad? Well, I did the equivalent to my face with my eyebrows. And I trimmed it, and it's like a little patchy here. Um, so luckily my eyebrows grow relatively quickly. I still have the length that I've been looking for. They're loud and in charge. But it's just a little patchy right here. And that's my good brow. So I'm very, very upset about that. All right. Anyway, rambling. Um, I bought the new, well, not new, it's new to me, it's been out for a little bit, but the Princess Azteca Volume 2 palette, because I have the Volume 1 that I absolutely love. Um, I love the company. I have glitters, pigments, I've got two, pa three palettes now. Um, I got another, I got these loose shimmery pigment, what are they called? I've got them here. Shimmery pigments. I think mine are mislabeled, because Venom, I thought, was the green, but it says Astral. I don't know, but they're like duo, well, you can't see that. This one's got like purple and green shift and they're really pretty, but I swatched it and I think it's something that I'm gonna have to do with a mixing medium. And I'm just not in the mood for all that mess. I just wanna kind of slop together a look. So I'm gonna play with the palette. Um, so the palette has, hold on, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 mattes and 12 shimmers. And they've got the mattes on the top and the bottom and shimmers in the middle and they are, Oh, so pretty colors. Their shimmers are amazing. Their mattes are really good. I'm going to, I kind of want to go for more of like this look toward, well, except for that blue, ignore the blue, more of this look towards the bottom. Um, but I haven't quite decided on what I'm really going to do, but I really want to kind of do like a green smoky eye. So I may kind of dip into this. I cannot pronounce these colors. The people who own this company are Haitian and um, Hispanic, I do believe. Um, and it's named after Aztec names. And I can barely speak English. If you watch my videos, you should know that by now or if you know me personally. So I'm not going to butcher a culture by trying to pronounce when I can't even do my own language. Um, brows are already done. They take forever. It takes me like 10 minutes. If you guys are interested and want to see kind of how I do my brows, I can do a more in detail video about it where it's just brows because I feel like that is such a boring thing to watch. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm not sure what I'm going to rant and ramble about, um, yet. I think some of it will kind of be about a combined birthday party I threw at my house. Well, my husband and I threw my husband's birthday was on November 13th, and a girl that I have become really good friends with, her birthday was on November 18th. Um, she turned 21, my husband turned 27, so we kind of decided to meet in the middle and throw a party over the weekend for the two of them, you know, to just celebrate your turning 21, and my husband loves to party, he's a social drinker, he, uh, his friends make fun of him, not really make fun of him, but he always has what they call the community bottle. So if they get sick, it always falls back on Ben um, because he loves to share. He's a sharer. He wants everybody to drink with him. So if you're with us, he will make you drink either Jack Daniel, Crown, whatever he's got, he's going to share. Um, that's one thing I love about him. Well, that he's a sharer, not like a drinker. Well, he's not an alcoholic. I'm just making this weird. Just stop. Um, so 
I picked up my friend Lexi in the afternoon and we kind of sat around in the room, my makeup room and played with makeup and just chatted. My husband sat or kind of stood in the door frame and talked with us um, while drinking a little. It was actually really fun. It was a really girly day. I don't have girly days, so I really, really enjoyed it. She's such a sweetheart. Um, and then people kind of started trickling in a little bit later, um, which is fine, because normally we start them at like five or six. I'm going in with this shade right here. We normally start them at five or six, and then people are like, oh, why didn't you start it sooner? So this time I scheduled at three, and then people started showing at five or six. Um, so that kind of cracked me up. Oh, I cannot talk and do this. Um, so when everybody got here, we have a um, pool table in our basement. So, you know, people were playing pool. They were standing around the kitchen and talking. We bought like 10 freaking pizzas, um, talking and eating. We had beer pong set up. So people were playing beer pong. We have darts downstairs as well. I don't know if anybody was playing darts. I wasn't downstairs too much. I made a... <laughs> I made my cheap alcoholic drink. Um, it's one of my favorites just because it is so darn cheap to make. This is the dual ended brush from that palette that's included. I figured I'd give it a try. Um, but you take peach mango Kool-Aid, no sugar, just make the Kool-Aid like you normally would. And then you dump Cruise Anne, <laughs> daggum $14 bottle of rum, uh, but banana rum. And you just dump those in together. And so you get drunk off of Kool-Aid and it's cheap. And I like my girly drinks and I had it in a uh, glass cactus cup that I got at Walmart. Love this cup. It's like one of my favorites. Um, and I kept setting it down and um, Lexi's boyfriend went and got me my cup at one point and he still cracks up about it because I was so excited. I was like, oh, you brought my cactus. Thank you, rookie. Because I'm extremely less awkward and more friendly when I'm drinking. Um, that's how I make all of my friends or when I'm drinking. Not saying I drink a lot, but when I do drink, I am a whole other friendly little creature. But it was a really fun time. It was very, very chill. We had quite a few people here. Um, we normally do. The only thing that kind of sucked is one person kind of ruined it. Not kind of. I mean, they ruined it for everyone. I mean, it didn't happen until like 1.20 in the morning, but I cannot imagine showing my ass as much as this person did. It is dumbfounding to me, and it's quite disrespectful. I get that, you know, some people can get rowdy when drinking, but the great thing about our parties is that they're always really chill. I think the only time that it's gotten like super crazy is the one time we were all twerking in the quick, well, I say twerking, but the only person that I could really see twerking at that time was Ben because my husband can move his butt unlike anybody I've ever seen. It makes me jealous because I look like a, a a twig getting down. There's no, there's no sick moves coming from me. Um, I'm gonna go in with this green shade because this color I'm hoping blends beautifully. So our parties never get too rowdy. And the fact that upsets me is that this fella um, got the police at our house. We had like a crap ton of police because he was showing his ass. And it was this whole big ordeal. But the fact that you're gonna come into somebody's house and cause that much of a scene and the situation that it was over, it shouldn't have even happened. Like. We're grown ass adults. I don't know why the situation stemmed from what it did because any adult, I'm going to use quotation, quotations because this is not what adults do, would have never let it get like that. And I'm, it just makes me upset. So, short, long story short, he will no longer be welcome to our parties because we are not about that life. I'm kind of embarrassed, one, because of my friends having to witness and be there during all of that. And, um, hold on, because this is kind of patching, which is normally what greens do. So bummer. 
But my friends had to endure it. My neighbor ended up saying something about how he was going to call the cops, but then realized that we had the situation under control. And we live in a quiet, nice area with a bunch of older people. I think, well, we are the youngest ones that live in this area, that especially that own a house. Um because the people around us are in their 30s and up, and my husband and I are we're on the latter side of the middle to late 20s. I mean, we bought the house when we were in middle 20s. Um, so that already kind of gives us a negative connotation or whatever the word I'm looking for, because we've got six dogs. We're so young. And, you know, neighbors like to talk, and I'm sure... Nobody really likes the fact that we've got six dogs because they do bark, not excessively, um, well, except for Spike. And then we have a party and then at one o'clock in the morning or so, all these cops show up. I know that, and that just embarrassed me because I do not want to be known as the troublesome neighbor. I'm a, I'm a people pleaser in heart. Um, I got, try to go above and beyond. And for me to feel like, Oh, do you see how patchy that is? Okay, we'll keep winning. And for somebody to come in and, you know, upset my little bubble of how I don't like to be really kind of ticks me off. It's just so disrespectful. But we had a good time. It was fun. Um, we had a lot of people come out of their bubbles. My two dogs, well, actually all of my dogs were getting so much love. Um, Coco and Agnes, they are bonded bigger than anything and they were the talk of the party because they kept cuddling. I've got this little wingback vintage chair over here and uh, they would be in a million different positions. So I got so many pictures since where people were like, oh my God, look how cute they look. Um, Cause they have to cuddle. They're, they're just precious. This is going downhill so quickly. We'll just keep blending and hope that it'll eventually turn out. Um, my friends uh, brought their dog, Frosty. I absolutely love this little girl. She is the sweetest, fluffiest thing. They had given her a bath before she came over, so she was so soft. But everybody loved her. Um, our dogs are not well-mannered, so ours didn't get to roam. So I'm sure that they were kind of ticky about it because they didn't get to roam and this strange dog got to. But she was so good the entire time. Everybody just wanted to love and pet on her. Um, she's so cute. There's a funny story about that. We dog sat for her at one time. And I would gladly do it again. It's not like this has deterred me at all from the situation. But they had gotten a few years ago a German Shepherd named Hulk. About two weeks before they went on vacation to, I think it was Florida, and so, you know, Frosty went from being an only dog to all of a sudden having another dog. So when they left, we watched Frosty and I think Ray, Raven's parents maybe watched Hulk. But Frosty, I guess, thought that she was getting abandoned for this new dog. So she wasn't really much of a problem. You could tell she was a little sad, a little upset. Understandable, your humans got a new dog and then two weeks later, you're at another human's house and it's a shelter dog. So, you know, the dog can be upset about that. So she escaped from her cage one day. Golly, this is not looking good. She escaped from her cage and um, decided to poop on our couch. <laughs> and she pooped perfectly in the middle of every one of our cushions. And we weren't mad. I mean, it happens. Um, but they felt so bad about it. But I thought it was absolutely hilarious. She's like, if my owners are going to leave me, I'm going to poop on my new owner's couch. <laughs> um, so that was kind of funny. And I've got a head cold, so excuse the snot snorting. Well, this has went way more north than I wanted. But who else? We just ended up chatting and hanging out. And I mean, it was all calm and good up until the very end of the knot. So I guess I can't complain too much. Um, I, like I said, I'm just embarrassed. But Lula, Lexi had a good time. And my husband had a good time up until, you know, the whole situation. Um, but he is a social butterfly. He loves people to have a good time. 
so it was right up his alley up until the very end. But the crazy thing is, is when everything happened, I was sitting, or I was in the bathroom, and I was actually removing my full face of makeup because I was going to be that rude host that's like, okay, guys, you keep partying. I'm going to bed. And all this happened, like, while I was removing my makeup right before I was actually going to go to bed because mamma don't stay up late. And then all this stuff happened. And I was like, mother titties. So, next party we have will not be like that. We are going to throw a Friendsgiving. So, I am really, really excited about that. Hold on. Is that... Oh, uh, it doesn't look as patchy. Maybe it'll come together all in the end. All we can do is put it together and hope for the best. But we are doing a Friendsgiving, which I guess I need to kind of connect up with all the people that are planning on coming to figure out who's making what so we don't get duplicates. Um, I have a couple friends that are coming that are vegetarians, so we have to make sure that we have some options available for them because we don't want to have everybody else cram their face on Friendsgiving and then not cater to our friends that don't eat meat, because that's just rude. Oh, but there was, um, my friends ended up staying the night, and, um, well, we woke up super late. They were super nice. I swear to God, Raven's so sweet. She, um, took out our, well, three of our dogs, because she wasn't sure what to do with the bottom dogs. Um, she took them out for us, and she apologized about, you know, still be in there, which is fun. That doesn't bother me. I'd actually like to hang out with them. And we were talking about plants. I was like, well, normally on Sundays, we go to Evergreen and go look at plants and I'll talk myself out of buying one or buy one. Well, she wants to get in plants too, because she wants to be like jungle in the house, clean air. Yay. If I can get anybody turned on into my hobbies, I'm totally excited about it because this means I get too obsessed with somebody else rather than me sitting in a corner being the weirdo going, I like plants. Um, so I took her, I got, I had her pick out a Dracaena because they are very forgiving plants that are hard to kill. And I bought a Wandering Jew. I've been wanting one for a while and I've just kind of talked to myself out of it. And they have this big, whoa, it was so lush. It's so gorgeous. And so I was like, you're coming home with me. So I get it home. And I noticed there's some like white spots on it. And I wasn't sure like if it was like water. So I kept a close eye on it. And then on Sunday, it started getting worse. And then by the time Monday came, I realized I had mealy bugs. Um, so it's really disappointing to be getting a, um, that's so gross, to get a plant from the nursery for it to have mealy bugs. So right now it's in quarantine. I'd be upset because it would be right here and you would see it's big purpley green gorgeousness. Um, but I can't risk infecting all of my other plants. I just killed mealy bugs. I have a Monstera Addisonii that had mealy bugs. And then I had, I had a golden pothos that had mealy bugs, but I had actually cut it up to propagate it. It's this thing right there. So the babies luckily that I had cut off hadn't had mealy bugs. So I threw away the mother plant and I'm gonna create a new plant from the cuttings. It had been water propagated for a while. Hold on, I'm going to pause, I'm going to cut my crease, and I'll be right back. So, bear with me, I can't talk and do this at the same time. But I'm going to try to remember, I was talking about golden pothos, so hold on. All right, if you hear nail ticking, my dogs have decided to get up and walk around. I've got three outside right now, and I've got three inside running around. Same two sweeties are in here. Oop. 
Um, but I cut the crease. I kind of went for a dramatic inner corner. I'm sure I'll regret this later on, but over the edge of this, I am applying some of that green shade to kind of get rid of the demarcation line. So golden potho. So I'm hoping that I can propagate it. I water propagated it. So we'll see how it turns out. Sometimes they can go through shock if you don't keep enough water. But if you keep too much water, you can kill. That's a f awful thing about plants. Either not enough water kills it or too much water kills it. So there's no winning. Um, I think I'm going to take a neon pigment. I think it'd be kind of cool above my crease to do this color. Oh, I can't pronounce that. Can you? I can't get it to focus, but I can't pronounce that. But it's a neon pigment by GLF Cosmetics. Why not stick to all GLF on my eyes? Um, probably going to regret this. I always get super nervous placing color, like as a cut crease. Um, so we'll we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't turn out, oh well. It's not like I'm going anywhere. We're going to pick up uh, my husband's Miata from a shop because he just had his Tahoe fixed. The transmission went out in that thing. Yay. All right. I'm probably going to fast forward and not talk through this so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. But just know that neon pigments are glorious products, but they have fallout. So when if you when and if you're using any kind of loose pigment, just don't do your foundation first. Okay, so what I did is I put that neon pigment above, and as you can tell, it's not very clean. So I'm going to go back in for a secondary cutting of the crease. Um, there's going to be so much makeup on my lids. So I'll fast, I'll probably just skip this, but all I'm going to do, I don't know, I'll skip it or fast forward it. But all I'm going to do is cut the crease again to kind of clean up this situation. But first, I am going to take a Q-tip, and I'm going to clean up some of the stuff on my mobile lid because if when I cut the crease um if there's too much of that neon pigment when I put the concealer over it it will kind of turn it that orange color so all I'm going to do is just kind of clean up some of this with a wet q-tip with some micellar water and then after I do that I'll go back in with the dry one So it's kind of haphazardly cleaned. Now we cut the crease again. So either fast forward or skip, I haven't decided. I'll figure it out during editing. So be right back. Okay, so I cut my crease again. I'm going to find my favorite itty bitty, probably should have done this before I cropped the video. Hold please. Oh, found it. Um, I haven't, do I want to go, I, I love how I ask you guys like you're here right now. I'm debating on this like coppery bronzy gold or this green. I think I'm just gonna do green. Am I gonna regret that? Oh, let's do it. So, random thing. I get this question a lot at my job where, cause I do wear my crazy makeup looks to work. Um, 
if I'm going to put the time behind it, I don't care to rock it out in public. Um, so my favorite question I get all of the time, I did this blue, it snowed, I think last week. I don't know. I'm losing time. This month's flown by. So I did this blue glittery liner, cut crease, full cut crease with snowflakes. It was, it was extra. But I had a couple customers throughout the day ask me, do you do your own makeup? I am a retail worker. Yes, I do my makeup. It just amazes me that people think that I have enough money to pay somebody to just do crazy makeup on me all day. And then when I tell them I do it, they're like, oh, wow. Which I don't think I'm that great at it, but they're like, you know, even if you don't feel like you're that good at it and you've got people saying, that's so cool. You're like, am I cool? Am I cool? Okay, I don't regret doing that. But it cracks me up. And I'm turning all of my friends that I associate with all day or a day into makeup fiends like me. So I can have a bunch of people that I can be like, oh my god, are you going to get this new palette? Instead of me talking about it and somebody going, what Chinese are you speaking? I'm so upset because I want the controversy palette. I'm kind of nervous about getting the controversy and conspiracy palette because I look at it and I'm very overwhelmed. I don't know what kind of looks I can create with it, so I kind of can't wait to get it to get my hands in there and see what looks I can create. But I tend to do the same half cut crease look all of the time. It's just what I like on myself personally. It used to be all about halo eyes, and then I've discovered I can't do halo eyes anymore. How do you lose it? Something that you can do, and then all of a sudden you can't do anymore. Doesn't make any sense. I know one makeup company that I really want to buy some eyeshadow palettes from is uh, Color Color Pop. Because I haven't tried any of their makeup, and one of the girls that I work with, she's been buying their palettes, and she really likes it. And the monochromatic feel really appealing pleases. Is that even a word? Appeases me because when I do looks, a lot of times I do like really monochromatic, all the same hues and tones. Um, and then I do like the super like super multiple colors, blah, 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 blah. But there is something about monochromatic looks that I really enjoy. And their smoke show, smoke obsession. I don't know. They're bringing early 2000s back color, all grays and blacks. I really, 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 really want that one. Okay, I'm digging this so far. I'm going to take a break for a second because I'm getting hot. Um, and I'm going to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my look. And I may come back with either some eyeliner or not, but I haven't completely decided what I'm going to do. But it looks like I'm trying to be like a hunter right now with the green and the bright orange. Like, don't shoot me. I'm in the woods. But I'll be back. Hold on, guys. Okay. So, I cut a wing. <laughs> More layers. I did a wing with concealer. And I'm going to take that same orange pigment and fill in my concealer with that orange pigment to kind of tie in some more of the orange. How many times can we say orange, 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 orange? So... Probably going to fast forward, hadn't decided what I'm going to quite do with it yet, but let's hope I just didn't screw up everything.
So what I did is I smoked out the bottom of my lash line with this and this. I don't know if I've mentioned it, so I'll re-mention it. I did winged eyeliner with concealer and then pack the shade all on top of it. Um, I am going to take a very small little detail brush to kind of clean up this right here with that green shimmer shade. Just apply some of that right here. Okay, and then I did my foundation, my concealer, my bronzer, blush, all of that. Um, so, I haven't decided on an inner corner highlight because I don't really see any that I like that I want to use from here. Let me find, let me find my Azteca Volume 1. Um... Yeah, so I think what I want to use is I want to use this shade right here as my inner corner highlight because I don't want anything too dark since, well, I mean, <laughs> I'll say I've got dark eyes and then there's that glow in this going on. I'm going to take that shade on just like a little pointy brush. What is this called? Pencil brush. Duh. And I'm just going to kind of highlight in this little lower tear duct region. And I'm gonna bring it back. Whew, okay. A little bit more than I wanted. So I'm gonna take and kind of lightly swipe the bottom edge. There we go. All right, so I'm going to um, quit scratching, Coco. I'm going to finish all this, do my hair, come back, do my wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Looks completed. Huh, what's going on here? All right, anyway, sidetrack. BRB. There's a dog right here in my lap that wants oh so much attention. So I guess I will do my outro petting my big old pit bull. So this is my, com <laughs> you see a little nose. Here's my completed look. Not my favorite, but it's still cute. I'll still rock it. I don't care. But it looks like I'm going to go hunting. Hippie girl. Hippie girl. So, all right, guys. Bye. Say bye, Coco. Say bye.